So I recently came across these little clock modules. Uh, they're Radio Shack Archer Kit clock modules, 12 volt DC, vacuum fluorescent. I think I actually have memories back in the day of actually seeing these, you know, hanging on a peg at Radio Shack. Uh, try to get around the glare here. Just a little vacuum fluorescent clock module. It's a two board construction. Little five pin connector here on the back. I thought we'd power one of these up and take a look. It is using chip on board. I don't know if I can get a shot of it there. Yeah, you can see it down under the black blob. It's chip on board. There's a large power resistor sitting back there. Not a whole lot to it. On the back of the package is the hookup diagram. It's typical Tandy. It tells you, but it doesn't quite tell you everything you need to know. So let's go ahead and see if we can power one up. So as I have three of the modules, I thought I'd go ahead and separate the boards. There's three three-pin connectors that jumper between the boards. I'm going to go ahead and unsolder this side and see if we can separate them. So ultimately, I really couldn't get the pins to unsolder cleanly, so I went ahead and cut the interconnect pins to separate the boards, and I'll pull those pins in a bit and clean it up. There's a surprising amount to this. On the power board, the backboard, we of course have an LM356, 358, uh, 358 op amp, a number of resistors, uh, an electrolyte cap, a couple transistors, diodes. It's a fairly packed little board and of course that little 120 ohm 2 watt power resistor. On the clock module itself, of course we have the chip on board under the black blob, a uh, diode, a 2.097152 crystal, and on the front of the board, of course, we have the VFD display, and over here we have a couple little buttons for setting the time, I, I would assume. Uh, it's a cute little module. Uh, go ahead, and we'll try to power one up. So, of course, uh, you who played with these little uh, packages from Radio Shack, there was, you know, pinouts on the back, instructions on the back. They weren't always the most accurate in the world. We can see on this that pin 5 is negative, and it basically says to operate from a 12-volt supply, tie 1, 2, 3, 4 together, and 5 to ground. So the question I had, looking at the back here, is which pin is 5? I know there's a standard for the connector. However, that doesn't necessarily mean Radio Shack followed the standard. So one of the things we see there is the blue electrolytic capacitor. Uh, there's arrows pointing towards negative and there's that crimp on the positive end. And looking at the negative lead there to the left of that blue electrolytic capacitor, I can see that it comes up to the connector pin to the left. So that tells me that outside pin is uh, pin 5 or the negative connection. So here's the setup. I've got the output one set to 12 volts, currently with a 50 milliamp current clamp. I think I'm over to a couple of binding posts on my breadboard station, which eventually jumped through a set of leads to get ground on the green wire and plus 12 on the four up above. Those come around to the module. The green, which is ground, is out to the edge there that we knew was pin 5, and the other four pins are set to plus 12. Let me see if I can get the module uh, set up where we can see it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the power supply on. It has clamped at the 50 milliamp clamp, no surprise. I'm going to start to bring the current clamp up. Oh, and we've lit up. So I've got a 70 milliamp current clamp at the moment. And the unit is drawing about 80 milliamps. Seems to be the total current draw. I'm set to 100 milliamps clamp. So the little module lights up. 
Let's take a poke at the buttons. We can set the hours. We can set the minutes. Looks like it's 11.02 here. 9, 10, 11. And when you want to bet this will roll over and set the hours to 12. Oh, didn't. Okay, 11.03. So, we have a little VFD clock module. All powered up. And it seems to be keeping time. Something I noticed was over here to the right, there's that little metal bar that runs across there. And looking at the other unit here, you probably can't see it, but there seems to be a contact up under there. It feels like a little switch to me, which is kind of odd. I'm not really sure what to think of it. Oops, if I can get a hold of the module. Doesn't seem to do anything when I depress it. I don't know. Get you to sit here. Well, I will let you run for a while. 11.04. Sweet. Little clock module from back in the day from Radio Shack. Little vacuum fluorescent display. I may have to put together a little case for this thing and actually use it as a desk clock. Very retro. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed this short video. And uh, we'll talk later. Bye. So I thought I'd do a quick time check-in with the little clock module. And it's staying pretty much in sync with the uh, clock I repaired in the previous video. So there you have it little realistic clock module from 30 years ago, probably.